Hello and welcome to the online broadcast of Life at Tupelo. If you're watching on Facebook Live, would you right now share our service? And if you're watching on YouTube, Twitter, or Instagram, let your friends and family on your social media feed check out tonight's broadcast. Tonight is midweek worship. What a blessing it is to continue in your work week with Life at Tupelo. Here in a moment, we are going to worship with music. We're going to hear the word of the Lord, and together we will be led into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you wouldn't mind helping us out right now, click that share button and let all of your followers on your social media feed check out tonight's midweek broadcast. If you are first time watching Life at Tupelo here tonight, and you're watching from a desktop browser, please click the online guest card link provided below in the comments. If you're watching on a mobile device, this hyperlink will be available for you to access at the end of tonight's service. When you fill out this form, our hospitality ministry team will FedEx you a free gift straight to the address that you have provided. And thank you to everyone who's been filling out our online guest cards. This coming Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. on our Life at Tupelo family Facebook page will be the next Connect Point class with Dell and Mel Rutland. Thank you to everyone who's attended these classes, and thank you to everyone who's registered for this semester. These classes are highlighting that everyone has a purpose and everyone has a ministry here at Life at Tupelo. If you or someone that you know would like to know more about our church and discover their unique gifts and ministry in the kingdom of God, simply go to lifeattupelo.com forward slash next step. When you fill out that form, someone will get in contact with you about those classes. We would like to take time and give and give another huge shout out to our medical first responders during this COVID-19 pandemic. We want you and your households to know that our church is personally praying the Psalms 121 prayer of blessing over all of you and family. The Bible says that the Lord is your keeper, the Lord will guard your going out and your coming in, everything that you do from this time forth and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said and typed, Amen. Well, we still have a little time remaining on this countdown. So can we just take a moment and just thank the Lord for his many wonderful blessings? Because God knows exactly what we need, and he knows the exact timing when those prayers need to be answered. We just have to fully trust in him. For all updates and announcements from our church and ministry departments, simply go to lifeatupelo.com. Thank you again for watching tonight's midweek broadcast here at Life of Tupelo. We are a church where everyone is welcome, nobody's perfect, and anything is possible.
Praise the Lord, everybody. How many of you want to see Jesus and make heaven your home? If you do right now, say amen. That's what we are all living for. And I look forward to seeing Jesus one day. Demetra, thank you so much for leading us in worship. And we pray that you have had a great week thus far. What an incredible Pentecost Sunday we had this past Sunday. May we all be filled with his spirit. Thank you for joining us online tonight. I'm honored to share the word with you. Tonight I would like to teach and preach for a few moments. Where do we go from here? We all struggle with different things. This past week, Brother Jeff Lee texted me this cartoon says, smite mine enemies, Lord. Smite my worst enemies with a plague of locusts. Let me rephrase that. We are our own worst enemy. How do we follow Jesus in this self-centered and selfie world? Today, I want to talk to you about where do we go from here. We must resurrect compassion. How do social media and technology propel a spirit of compassion and how might it hinder compassion? Social media has been a game changer as it has really helped make a difference in the world. We can now raise self-awareness for different ministries and different organizations, all sorts of different things. We can raise money. There can be things that nobody was talking about before that everybody's talking about now. Overnight, something can become very, very popular and known, and then also overnight, people can also stop talking about it. A couple of examples. In April 2014, the headlines reported 200 Nigerian schoolgirls are missing. It captured our heart. It captured the heart of the world. Everybody was talking about it on social media and all other places. Well, as of today, tragically, many of those young girls are still missing. And I don't know if anybody is still talking about it. It's hot one minute and then it's cold the next. Also, in the summer of 2014, many of you might remember the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. For three or four weeks, that's all anybody did. It was getting ice water dumped on your head. How many of you remember that? I did it from a front-end loader, bucket full of ice and ice water. I will never forget the experience. Before, nobody was talking about 
Lou Gehrig's disease. But after that, a lot of money was raised and a lot of people were talking about it. And then it kind of passed as quickly as it came. There are so many benefits, but we'll see that things can become popular and then they are not. With all the benefits that social media platforms can provide, there are also some downsides as well. The University of Michigan did a comprehensive study on 14,000 college students between the years of 1979 and 2009. And what they found was that there was a drastic decline in empathy. In fact, the results of this massive study show that we care 40% less about other people than we did in the 1980s. 40%. It was a drop in compassion that coincides with the rise in social media and technology. So I have to ask a question, how does technology cause us to care less? Number one, as we are more obsessed with ourselves. Those who are younger, the selfie has been a part of their vocabulary and that's just not normal. However, turning a camera on yourself is not normal. Studies show that 80% of what a person does on social media actually relates directly to the user. In other words, if I'm going on social media, I'm going to see what I'm interested in. I'm going to see what you're saying about me. I'm going there to see, did you like my picture. I'm going there to see, did you comment on my picture? About 80% of what we do on social media directly relates to us. And when we see something related to us, our brain releases a little chemical called dopamine, which gives us a legal buzz. Therefore, since we are looking at stuff, dealing with us, and dopamine is being released, our bodies are actually training us to be more self-centered. May God help us. He has called us to be selfless and not selfish. Number two tonight is overwhelming exposure to suffering desensitizes us. Most of us have seen pictures or commercials of starving children. Many of us saw pictures of the Las Vegas shooting. It was so graphic. We've all seen crazy stuff posted on Facebook or in the news. And many have recently seen the picture of George Floyd in Minnesota. And when we see these type pictures, it doesn't even bother us nearly as much as it used to because if we're not careful, we've been desensitized to it. Number three tonight is the lack of personal interaction makes it easier not to care if someone loses their job. Is it easier not to care when they post it or they are sitting across from you at the table. When they are sitting across from you, you can now see the desperate look in their face and suddenly you are moved in your heart in a way that I would not from a distance. It's easier to disconnect from a distance. And when we relate so much to others based on what we see through social media, we actually end up caring less. God help us. Two big points on compassion tonight. Number one is true compassion demands action. In fact, 
the Greek word that's translated as compassion means to have your bowels yearn. I've got to be honest with you. I'm not even sure what that means, but it sounds serious to me. I mean, like your intestines are doing something inside of you, right? There's an aching on the inside for somebody else. It means to feel deep sympathy for. It also means to be moved to action. To me, this is so powerful. It's not just an emotion that we feel, but compassion is an action, and true compassion demands action. Number two tonight, to say that you care, but not act is to not care at all. What happens? Well, we see something on Instagram. We see something on Facebook. Well, okay, click. They're going through a hard time, so I like that. Let me tell you tonight that caring is not clicking. Caring is acting. It's actually being involved to make a difference. Caring, ladies and gentlemen, is not liking a post. Caring, young people, is loving a person. It's being moved from the depths of your soul to get outside of yourself, to get involved in the life of someone else. In fact, it's amazing to me, but when you look at the life of Jesus and every time you see the word compassion in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, as related to Jesus, it's always represented by a corresponding action every single time because he felt something, therefore he did something. Mark chapter 1, verses 40 through 41, a man with leprosy came and knelt in front of Jesus, begging to be healed. If you're willing, you can heal me and make me clean, he said. Move with compassion. Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. Matthew chapter 14 and verse 14, when Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Jesus felt for them and therefore he was moved to action. Matthew chapter 20, verses, verse 34 says, Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes and immediately their sight and followed him. Jesus felt compassion. Therefore, he acted. And true compassion, ladies and gentlemen and young people, demands action from you and I to say that you care but not act is to not care at all. Sometimes I've got to be honest with you and honest with myself. When is the last time that you've given a whole day or maybe even a weekend to serve somebody else besides yourself? When is the last time that you've gone significantly out of your way to give financially? not just what you're expected to do, but something to make a difference in someone else's life. When is the last time you didn't do something you really wanted to do because you went and you invested that time in someone else? What does compassion do? Number one, I hate to tell you this, but it's true. Compassion interrupts. When you look at Jesus, you'll see time and time and time again. When he was interrupted by needs. In Mark chapter 6, for example, he was resting in a quiet place. We all love to rest. He couldn't even eat and he saw the crowd and he had to teach them. He gave them a word. In Luke chapter 8, on his way to heal a girl that was dying. He was interrupted by a woman who had been sick for 12 years. An interruption. Mark chapter 2, 
the roof was caving in while he was teaching, interrupted again. He was inconvenienced. But God often works, listen to me, God often works through divine interruptions. And we often miss those because we're too busy doing our own thing. I don't know what it'll be for you, but God may move you to pick up the phone and call somebody or somebody's got a need and you can meet it to say you care, but not act is to not care at all. Number one is compassion interrupts. And number two is compassion costs. Jesus told a compelling story about the good Samaritan who goes and he helps a Jewish man. And he goes out of his way to help someone that would have actually hated him. And he bandages this guy up and he picks up this bloody guy and he puts him on his donkey and he goes and he pays two days of his own earnings to a hotel owner so the guy can stay there. It cost him something. But too often in our culture, we want to do drive by compassion. We want to do what's easy for us. It's not inconvenient and this is so easy, but true compassion, true compassion generally cost us something. And that's the thing. Clicking is clean, but compassion is messy, ladies and gentlemen. And there's a beauty in that. When you get out of yourself and you follow where God leads you, some of you know what I'm talking about. You feel that need or compassion to serve in a ministry that doesn't bring you any personal glory. Or maybe you felt the compassion to be a foster parent. You're going to fall in love with a kid and you're going to give that kid back in a short season. That's not easy. Maybe you're going to serve some purpose and it's going to be difficult, but that's what compassion does. Number one, compassion interrupts. Number two, compassion costs. And number three, compassion changes lives. Compassion changes lives. Everywhere Jesus went, when he was moved with compassion, he changed lives. Our hearts are heavy as we continue to witness unjustified violence, particularly against our black brothers and sisters. But life in Tupelo stands in harmony and unity with all people, and we peacefully rally together, standing firm on the hope of Jesus Christ. And today, we acknowledge that although our world is crippled by the virus, not of corona, but the virus of hatred and discrimination, we choose to walk in love and perfect peace. We will never stop bringing light to darkness and putting Christ at the center of everything that we say and do. And as a church, we will not stand on the sidelines, but we will raise our voice and seek to defend our brothers and sisters. So I came to ask us tonight a very simple question, where do we go from here? I'm urging the life at Tupelo community to take the following steps. Number one, first and foremost, is we will pray. We will pray for justice. We will pray for peace. We will pray for the love of God to overcome darkness. We will pray first. Number two is we as a church must practice compassion and empathy. We must seek to understand before you seek to be understood. Yesterday, I participated in a Zoom call with local pastors concerning race relations. Also, a fellow 
black pastor and I sat in my office for several hours working through issues concerning what their community is feeling and how we can work together. Let me tell you today, it begins with a conversation. And I ask you to have a conversation with someone this week who doesn't look like you and someone who doesn't act like you. Every relationship begins with a conversation and every relationship begins with trust. And as we found out yesterday sitting in my office, we are better together. Number three is we will participate. We, life at Tupelo, will represent people of love. We will raise our voice. We must say something. We cannot be silent any longer. Proverbs chapter 31 verses 8 and 9 says, Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. For the rights of all who are destitute, speak and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and needy. If you would tonight, I wish you would bow your heads as I pray a closing prayer on this service. Father, we thank you for your word that we've heard tonight. In reading this week in John chapter 17, Jesus prayed a prayer. And his prayer was, Lord, make us one. And my prayer today is that we would be one. And when we are one, I believe that healing will begin to take place. And when we are one, revival will come. Lord, may we love like you love. And may I have compassion like you have compassion. I pray that you would let it happen in the name of Jesus Christ. And we ask all these things in your name. And everybody say amen. Amen. Thank you again for joining us online tonight. We hope that you will join us either in person at 9 or 11 a.m. Sunday or also online. Everything at the church is clean and sanitized. And we are ready to see you. Join my wife tonight as she comes to close us out. Thank you again in Jesus' name. Make us one heart, make us one mind, make us one. Let your will be done, make us one.
God's love, we're going to stay. Thank you for attending our midweek worship here at Life at Tupelo. What an incredible worship set we experienced tonight and the ministry of the word of the Lord. Right now, we want to transition this service and go into our final act of worship, and that is through our giving. Here at Life at Tupelo, there are five ways to give. You can go to our website at lifeattupelo.com, go to our main menu and select the give, and you can give through our website. Or you can go to your app store, you can download the Faith Teams app or the Tithe app, set up your account, just search for Life at Tupelo FPC. Or you can, on your mobile device, you can text the word GIVE to 662-546-1736. And our last option is you can mail in your offering to Life at Tupelo, 900 South Thomas Street, Tupelo, Mississippi, 38801. Thank you again for watching our midweek worship here tonight. Here at Life at Tupelo, we're a church where everyone is welcome, nobody's perfect, and anything is possible. Thank you.